Matthew 11, verse 20. Then began he, Jesus, to upbraid the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done, because they repented not. Woe unto thee, Chorazin! Woe unto thee, Bethsaida! For the mighty works which were done in you have been done in Tyre and Sidon. All right, the mighty works is not only the works of Jesus, but he sent the 12 disciples out healing, raising the dead, cleansing the lepers. We read that earlier. So with Jesus and the 12 disciples going all areas except Gentiles, going to the Jewish people, preaching and teaching and the signs of the kingdom. What is the outcome? The nation wants him on the cross. Dead. What's the church got to learn? Well, we got to have more numbers. We got to have all these people. We got to go. To, they hate you. And if they don't hate you, you're doing something wrong. Not once. During the three and a half years of the ministry of Jesus, did he change anything to get anybody's approval or anybody's liking? And Lord willing, when we get to it, John 6, 66, even Jesus Christ himself has a church split. I had one preacher one day cried me, oh, this church is going to... Well, Jesus had one. What, you're better than Jesus? So, the disciples and Jesus are active in the ministry of Jesus, of healing, signs and wonders and preaching. And Jesus condemns them because they have not repented of everything that's going on. So when you proclaim that America's a Christian nation and we've got freedom and we got rights and we've had the great revival and we were based upon the Geneva Bible and the pilgrims and, and Thanksgiving and all that and then we're a nation today that doesn't repent we're a nation that turns against it. we are hanging our own selves. Because everything that has happened in this nation as far as God bless America, and I'm going to say God has blessed America. And when you waste his blessing, and you give not thanks to him, woe unto thee America, woe unto thee Washington, If Tyre and Sidon, Gentile, Jewish sea coast along the Mediterranean Sea, Tyre is a mighty nation. It was attacked, I believe, Babylon, and they went out to the island and built a fortified nation unto Alexander the Great. I believe, and I'm thinking right now, Zion, I think that's where Jezebel is from. I, I could be wrong about that. But two nations mighty in power. Jesus said, if you would have repented, you would be there in the time of Jesus, and they're not. Chorazin and Bethsaida. They're there. But Tyre and Simon are no longer there. Repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. Well, that's Nineveh. He said, well, what about Nineveh? Well, it went the, it went the hard way. It went the way of sin. Pitches America. America at one time repented of her sin. I don't believe there's going to be ever a national revival. I don't even believe there's going to be a church revival in America. Maybe, 
I find it hard to believe. Not with the nonsense, not with the sins, and not with the paganism that's in the churches that where it shouldn't be. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable and tire inside it. Wicked nations. At the day of judgment then for you. Tyre and Sidon did not have Jesus walking around. Tyre and Sidon did not have the twelve apostles or disciples doing miracles. There has been no nation of great importance as America that has been built on the word of God, the Geneva Bible. The very fact that saved the Mayflower coming across the Atlantic Ocean was they took the, 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 the screw from the printing press, they're gonna they brought the print Bibles to take care of the broken mass on that ship. Now we got a broken nation. We're not turning to the Bible for help. We're turning to let's make laws, let's get electric vehicles. Let's get the Republicans. Let's get the Democrats. Let's equal rights. They ain't going to do you no good. Thou Capernaum, which are exalted unto heaven like the Tower of Babel, like America. Like England was. Like Japan was. Notice I keep saying was. It shall be brought down to hell. One of those times that Jesus used the word hell. And he's talking about a complete nation. For the mighty works which have been done in thee, the preaching of Jesus, the preaching of the disciples, the healing of Jesus, the healing of the disciples in Jesus' name. Now, I'm not talking about with modern medicines and CAT scans and pharmaceuticals. Peter's mother-in-law had a fever. She was in bed. Jesus rebuked the fever. And actually, you know, you, you, you got all these people outside the front door and back door. It was known what Jesus did. It was known what Jesus said. Not in America today. America, you, you, you got to have the Mormons. You got to have the Jehovah Witness. You got to have the Catholic. You got to have the Muslim. You got to lie about them. Now, the, the church today, and whether it be Baptist or whatever you want to call it, the church that's supposed to be right doesn't cover up with a lie. She goes in ignorance of church history. And America has a race history to remind us what evils beheld. The mighty works have been done had in Sodom, we all know about Sodom, it would remain unto this day. If Sodom had Jesus, now look at, look at this one. If Sodom had Jesus and the disciples preaching and healing, Sodom, Sodom, Sodom would have repented and would have gotten right. And you think about, well, Sodom, you know, Sodom means sexual sin. It also had abundance of bread, Ezekiel tells us. And it was a bundle of idleness, great pride. And you read those sins, it's the sins of America. Do you realize we are at the point today, today, if Jesus would go into your Baptist church, he would be thrown out. 
If Jesus walked up to the pastor of a Southern Baptist church and said, listen, your, e your Easter is pagan. If, if Jesus would have walked up to your Baptist uh, preacher and said, the, the Christmas is pagan, well, I hope it don't offend you if we keep it. Of which I've had two pastors of such tell me. We're going to keep the paganism. We're going to ignore the historical facts. So we can keep on sinning and bring all kinds of people on the two times of the year that people come out to church. So they can hear my great sermon and fill the pot full of money. And those people that come twice a year, and those people that put their money, if they, the, the book of Proverbs says, if they come with a wicked heart, they come in evilness, they come in wickedness, God says, that, that, that offering is an abomination. Had King Saul, I don't think he ever said it did, gone to the temple and brought sacrifices, God would hey, yo, buddy, You realize know, like Sodom, we talk about Sodom and Gomorrah in the neighboring city, is worldwide. I just read tonight that the Mormon church is taking a stance now in same-sex marriage. It's everywhere. We don't have a worldwide one language of the Tower of Babel in Genesis. We got a, wor a worldwide sex problem. We don't know what sex we are, and we don't know who we're supposed to be having sex with, and we don't know what God's stance is on sex. Though you can get yourself, a, 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 you can get yourself a simple dollar King James Bible. You can maybe go to your local library and take out a. King James Bible. You can go online and get a King James Bible and you don't have to get very far uh, as far as Genesis 4 to realize male and female. And all these religions defile God and our church is going to do same-sex marriages. Welcome to the world of Sodom. And then you turn around and you want God's blessing. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment. Now think about that. And Ezekiel, now don't worry about, you know, Genesis. The people that came in were going to break the house down to, to have sex the males with the two male angels. Talk about what Ezekiel says, abundance of bread. Well, our grocery stores are empty now. The abundance of idleness that you got three or four or five women sitting on the table just talking garbage, talking junk. They don't even know nothing. They probably don't even know how to cook a meal. They probably don't even know what to do with a vacuum cleaner. And yet they're listened to. You got women who sit here, now I don't know what it's like today, but they're watching doctors and nurses on a screen and love lives of Luke and Laura, and those are not real doctors and those are not real nurses. They don't have the certificates, they don't have the medical degrees, they don't have the license, and yet you watch them as serious as serious as apple pie can be. And you've got people go out there and they make these pumpkin guns and watermelon guns. How far we can shoot the watermelon. How far we can shoot the gourd. How we can waste our food. How we can fill our restaurant uh, uh, dumpsters. America.
you don't realize what stuff is getting thrown out. When I worked for a, a donut place, and there was a one, single mom there, whatever reason, she had children. She asked me if she could take some donuts home for her children. I mean, this was at the end of the day, within about three or four or five hours after that, in the middle of my, my, my two or three o'clock shift, I would pull them down and I would count them and put them in the, in the dumpster. Instead of putting them in the dumpster, I gave them to her, some of them, not all, to take home to her children. And I was called into the office that what I did was a health hazard. You know, we got to stop looking at, you know, sodomy, sodomy. We got to look at the sins, other sins of Sodom. Because they're here and now in America. That when Lot went to go tell his, his sons-in-law, they mocked him. When you tell them about Jesus, they mocked him. And at that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, God, Lord of heaven and earth. Well, evolution is Mother Earth. It's the Big Bang. Let's waste our money to go find water on Mars. No big deal. A couple months ago, Mississippi needed water. Florida had too much water. Why don't you, have, why don't you waste your money on human beings rather than Martians? And I read another thing. Like I said, I read the, 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 the I read the headline. Scientists have now come to the conclusions why we haven't found Mars. I know. I don't need to read the story. There are none. But you want everyone to believe that there's Martians, because if we were to find a Martian or a Uranian, you know, Uranus, then we can disprove the Bible. If we can find an alien. For God so loved the world. You see, that world was single and not worlds that there's life out there. Where is it? Because they had hid the thing from the wise and prudent. There was a time your doctors working with the human body would acknowledge the God of the human body. Now it's all speculation. As complex as the human eye is. And I can go to a thousand, maybe a million things that the human eye and all about the human eye. An electronic camera. And I can compare the two and the lenses and everything, the colors. And yet, you're wise, you're educated. It happened by accident. We are here by random. Well, with, with the accidental, how come there is no life on Mars? Why is it so far in nine planets or eight planets? We are the only ones conditioned for this planet. And we were a little to the sun, we all rose. If we were a little away from the sun, we all freeze to death. Because that happens completely by accident. This is the wise and prudent. This is the education that's teaching our children today. You don't know what a penis is, and you don't know what a female is, and you got to check a checkbox for whatever sex you, you want to be claimed, that you don't even know if you're a transsexual or bisexual or a homosexual you have no being but we're wise to know nothing and again I read another thing is that they have come up with a a shot or something for fentanyl I got the cure for fentanyl don't make it I got the cure for alcoholism. Don't make it. You want the cure for tobacco and, and lung cancer and all that? Don't make it. 
And if the person caught making it, you take them to the to the city square, the front of everybody, and you electrocute them right in front of all. The, this is what's going to happen to you if you continue in sin. We're going to electrocute you. We're going to shoot you. We're going to hang you. Whatever the tort nine, we can't do that because the criminal has more rights in America. Well, you know those those mean, nasty Muslims. Yeah, but those mean, those mean, nasty Muslims provide the capital punishment for the people that do crime. Those mean, nasty Muslims, you're going to find it very hard to rape their women in the public in the way they dress. The Muslim women don't show their boobs and their butt. Now I'll tell you the Jehovah Witnesses, they don't honor the flag as much as an American honors the flag above God and Jesus in the Bible. If you were more dedicated to God and Jesus Christ as much as a Mormon or a Jehovah Witness going out and telling people about their religion... Then your sport. You know, I, I'm getting so sick and tired. I'm, I go to church. I hear people talk about policy. I hear them talk about the sports game. But I don't hear them talking about Jesus. And when I try to talk about Jesus, where'd he go? You know, if we can get the Republicans in there, hey, man, we can get that guy saved. We can do, well, you know, well, well, well. The wise and brute, but has revealed them on debate. The person Paul says in the church is the least esteemed. That's the one that God's going to use. That's the one to bless. There are people that sit in the church, oh, how great we are, how great prayer warrior works is such great people. It's that unknown, uncared for Christian that is saved and sits in the pew that prays. And makes no big deal of it. That will hear the prayers of the church. Will hear what's going on to the announcements of the church. And this person's in the hospital. And they will go home. And they'll pray for that person with all their might and all their care. I've heard the great wise and prudent. They get called on in the church and look. Oh Lord, one time for our meal, no, no, we're not having. And they just flump it like, do you even pray? Even so, Father, capital F, that's God. For it so it seemed good in thy sight. The wise and prudent is not good in the eyes of God. The babe. The one that will walk up to the educated scholar or pastor and say, that's wrong. Well, you know, in the Hebrew and the Greek, and they don't care. <laughs> Pastor's got big words, I noticed the other day. They don't care. They don't know. They don't care. What, you got to carry a, a, a King James Bible, a, a dictionary, and a Greek lexicon with you to go to church? Wait a minute, hold on, I, I'm still looking up that big word that you use. That you had to look up in your study, in your office. Smarty pants. And they're, they're worried about the these and thou's of the Bible. All things are delivered unto me, Jesus, of my Father. Everything of God has been handed over to Jesus. Well, if he's not God, Mr. Jehovah Witness, what do you call it? Jesus is the only begotten, the firstborn of God. <coughs> Excuse me. He gets that right 
of the first part, of everything. Yeah, I read today, I, I'm doing uh, I'm doing with Obadiah, but I'm doing between Esau and Jacob. And I'm at the firstborn, and I looked up the firstborn. And that it also said, it, was, it got me, because back then, in the Oriental and Eastern, Middle Eastern people, it also gave you a right to a multiple wives. And the multiple wives is not sexual fantasy. It's you can have more more children for your royalty. David had no problem if his sons were and four of his five of his sons died. Who was going to sit on the throne next? He had plenty of wives and plenty of sons. Had David had only one wife, they'd been trouble there. Because David would lose four of his sons. But that, that power of the firstborn gives that child a right for multiple wives as see fit for the family production of the family name. As of me right now, and my son, I don't know, The, the family name of Hayward, and I'm thinking right now, nope, my, my cousin died, my cousin died, I think it was, no, I don't think, they, I don't think, my, I don't think my uncle had any, any children. If my son doesn't have any male seed, there will come a time that the name of Hayward will die. The name of David hasn't died. And will not die in Jesus. And what I'm trying to say, and I'm thinking a long thing, is the right, the right of the multiple marriages is Jesus has a bride, the church. And God has a bride, Israel. Well, God and Jesus are one in one. That Jesus actually has two brides. One is the nation of Israel, and one is the church. Don't get them both mixed up. Because the church is Jew and Gentile, but you're no longer Jew and Gentile. You're the church. The Jew, the, the Hebrew, the Israelite, is not a Gentile. And if he mixes in with the Gentile, he's got his own other name called Samaritan. you got to rightly divide the Bible. So everything is given in the hands of Jesus that... There will be a day that all human beings will bow down, whether saved or lost, and declare that Jesus is the Lord by the Father. <clears throat> no man knoweth the Son but the Father. And if it wasn't God, we wouldn't know no we would know nothing of the Son. Which would bring us to the Holy Spirit. Neither know any man the Father, save the Son. What has been learned about the Father except the three and a half years of the public ministry of Jesus Christ? And I ask you, in the, in the three and a half years of the church today, Baptists, if you were to go to church three and a half years, in your local Baptist church, what would you learn about? Would you learn about the Father? Would you learn about the Son? Would you learn about the Holy Spirit? Or would you learn about fellowshipping, cookies, and Easter? Think about that. At this point right now, 
last three years of your church, what have you grown to know that you did not know when you first started? And is it worth it to God, or is it time to start looking for another church? Or shall you start right now and say, hey, I'm going to mark my calendar. If the Lord tarries 2025, I am going to look down in a notebook and I'm going to see what I learned of this church. For the Father, for the Son, for the Holy Spirit, and not for the flesh. Because after three, after three and a half years of the ministry of Jesus, which we're talking about, that cities will be condemned because the three and a half years that Jesus preached and taught and healed, they are going to stand nowhere in judgment. Had other cities heard and had Jesus walked their streets, And the people so learned with Jesus that he taught doctrine as no one has ever taught it before. And the religious people became envious. We got to kill them. So here's a question to you. Whether your church in the past or your church in the you know, how I know my church is three and a half years, give the same amount of time with Jesus. What have you learned about? I was in the Southern Baptist Church. You know, we had good lectures. We had good teaching. But we didn't get the word of God. We got every word but. We got good pep talks. Another Baptist church I went to, I got heresy and falseness and false teaching of what the Christian truly is. And I wasn't even there for three three and a I don't think two years, maybe, maybe three years. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son. Okay. And when it comes to the conclusion, three years, one year, four years, seven years, all your entire life in a church, if you are in a godly, correct, King James Bible believing church, it's not that man in the pulpit. It's not that man in Sunday school. Is does the Holy Spirit work? I, I was in a Southern Baptist church, and every, before every service, was like, oh, come Holy Spirit, whatever we sing about, come Holy Spirit. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. I'm saying to myself, wait a minute. I'm saved. The Holy Spirit's already here. I am to ask Holy Spirit be filled in me. Not come Holy Spirit. He's here. And this comes from the Son. This comes through the Father. Without the Father, you don't know the Son. Without the Son, you don't know the Father. The Holy Spirit instructs us. I would say if we assume that the Son is the Father, the Father is the Son, their God, and the Jehovah Witnesses can go take a flying deep jump into hell that Jesus just mentioned that they don't believe in. Because I have been to a few funerals. I've had people I know and love and acquainted with die. You don't take the lost man, or you don't take the saved man, you don't bury them bodies in a city dump for their Ganhena. And if you don't understand what I said, the Hebrew and the Greek is, instead of hell, it's the city dump. The grave is, the, the grave is hell. 
Well, in Connecticut, in the winter, they got these big round ovens, I call them. And they're propane. They got to heat the ground of a grave in order to dig the six feet to bury your grave. Listen, if hell is the grave, you don't need the propane to heat up the ground. Every time you dig the ground for a grave, you be burnt up like the men of Nebuchadnezzar when they went to go put Shadrach, Meshach in to go into the plane. The fire gripped them. <laughs> Save the son, he to whomsoever the son will reveal him. So not everybody gets the revelation of the father or the son through the Holy Spirit because in John... Jesus says the world can't receive the Spirit. <coughs> if you're not saved, you don't get the Holy Spirit. You're not going to get a revelation. So when you go to a Christian bookstore, or you go to a Christian school, if that instructor is not saved, you are not being taught by the Holy Spirit. If you're not saved and you reject the concept of everything that Jesus is, John says you're an Antichrist. You're surely not going to get the revelation of the Holy Spirit. And that's what he's talking about in Matthew eleven twenty seven. 27. Talk about the revelation of the Trinity. Come unto me. All right. Come. That's an invitation. There's no altar, there's no building. All that ye labor are heavy laden. Now, the heavy laden is what the Pharisees. And the Sadducees and the scribes that, you know, you didn't wash your hands before you ate. You went one centimeter too far on your Sabbath journey. You are a mint leaf short of your time. And what the religious hierarchy of the day is... They have put so many burdens on the people which they don't obey themselves. And what the, the invitation is right now, Jesus is saying, are you in this religion called Phariseeism, Sadduceeism? Come on to me. There's no Catholic Church yet. The Catholic Church puts heavy burdens on these people. They put sacraments. Well, you know, if, if you're a Catholic and that person's not a Catholic, you can't be married within the gate. And if you're not Catholic, you can't be buried in our graveyard. If you can't be buried in our graveyard, you ain't going to heaven. And if you don't burn a candle, light a fire, set your butt, whatever, the Mormon church will take your finances they will take your account and they'll say, okay, this is how much you owe us in time. That's ridiculous. I mean, I, you think the Baptist churches, they run to Malachi. The Mormon church will take, will have you somehow, some way, produce your account. And they will tell you by your account or counting, whatever. Or maybe the fact is that they own Utah. They own the, the, and they already know what you make. And they'll take what you make. Okay, this is what you owe us. Friend, that's what the, 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 the pilgrims did to the congregational church. That's a church-state system. I mean, you might say, all right, you made $100, uh, Here's ten dollars taken out, given to the church, and then you know Uncle Sam. And that's what Jesus is saying to the Jews: You are so burdened by those Pharisees, those Sadducees, 
do this, don't do that, do that, don't do this, don't do that, do this, do that, whatever. He says, come to me. I will give you rest. Now, rest is a Jewish concept found in a Jewish book. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Let's, let's, let's get real technical. Ready? Called Hebrew. Oh. Don't, 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 don't. And if you read through Hebrews, you'll find a rest. That's the millennium. That's the Jews in their promised land. That's them with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's not the church. Listen, as far as the church goes with the rest of the millennium, if you don't earn an inheritance with Jesus, because it's an earned inheritance, of a right to reign in a city. I don't know what happens to you. I don't know if you stay in a heavenly waiting room or what. But that millennial rest is Jewish. In a word called land. Land is not Gentile. Land is not church. Land is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Abraham didn't get that rest yet. He will. With his descendants. And you're going to labor in the millennium. But you're going to get in the yoke, 29, with Jesus. He says, take my yoke upon you. He doesn't say take up your couch potato. A yoke is an instrument used for farming and breaking ground. Carrying or moving a wagon. It still works. Before the fall of Adam, God took a man named Adam. He says, here's the garden. Oh, great. Now you address it, and you keep it. You W-O-R-K it. And he had not fallen. Work is a four-lettered word. No, it's not. Work came before the fall. After the fall, sweat and death came. I will give you rest, take my yoke upon you, and learn of me. So not only the yoke with Jesus is laboring for the Father, it's a learning experience. For I am meek and lowly of heart. Ye shall find rest, there's that word again, Unto your soul. Well, there's no rest for a soul that's in hell. So these would be the Jews that put their faith, obey the law, and do. Here's the salvation. Get in my yoke and you'll be saved. You want to dare try to teach Salvation today will get in the yoke of Jesus. What do you do when you get somebody who has put their faith and trust in Jesus? What do you do if they don't do nothing for the rest of their life? Now, I heard the other day, Sunday, my pastor, I heard him give the most remarkable, I've never heard it before given, means of salvation. And it was not say this prayer, come to the altar. <clears throat> he said, do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe that Jesus suffered and died and was buried? Do you believe that Jesus took the penalty of sin?
Can you rest in that Jesus is your means of salvation? Is it all right? Tell him. Now, if anybody did say, "Hey, Jesus, I believe you are the one. I, I don't. I don't believe in anything else. I believe you are the means of salvation." Sure, safe belief, name written in the Lamb's Book of Life, never set foot in church again, never do anything for Jesus again, never do any work. That person's going to heaven. Unless you want to take Matthew 11, 28, and 29, and 30, and put it on the Christian, where there are no Christians. Again, I say that because I was in the church with a pastor that taught the people out of there are Christians in the Old Testament. Okay, then the Christian can lose it 28, 29, 30. If he don't work. So what do you find in the churches today? We're going to have a sign-up sheet. We're going to have a work day. We need somebody to cut the lawn. We need someone to wipe down the pews. Uh-huh. And then when you get the work days for the church property... Guess what happens? More show up for the work day, more show up for the fellowship than for the service. For my yoke is easy. That's a contradictory term. You would think yoke is easy? Well, yeah, if you got Jesus in it with you. And my burden is light. Hey, it's not you doing all the work. It's not Jesus doing all the work. It's to both of you. And as far as the Christian, if you're going to be involved in whatever ministry God has given you, work it with Jesus. Have Jesus work it with you. Not just Jesus and not just you. Both of you together. And that can be applied to a Christian.